Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. How y'all doing? I hope all is well. I hope everybody's feeling good. I hope you're in good spirits and all smiles this morning. And if you're not, try to dig down deep inside and pull out one, y'all. It feels good to be able to smile. I know how it is, y'all. I know it get hard. You run into obstacles and people that rub you the wrong way and so I, I truly understand but we're gonna stay prayerful we're gonna continue to try to do our best in Jesus name so here we are today y'all I asked y'all to forgive me for missing on yesterday but I pray that you were able to hold on to something else that was said in one of the daily devotionals that can take you through yesterday and that you pulled out your Bible and you took it upon yourself to just read and just fill your spirit with his word. We got to run this race, y'all. Yes, we do. And um, so we're going to come today and I am going to start by reading a few pages. Um, We're going to talk about being positive once again. Bless someone. God knows and sees. You can change. And God is on your side. Renew your joy. Okay. So just a few as always. So we're going to start with God is on your side. So the scripture that we're going to start with is Psalms 149 and 4. And it reads, for the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the humble and humble with salvation and adorn the wretched with victory. Psalms 149 and 4. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the humble with salvation and adorn the wretched with victory. And Joyce writes, if you never face trials, you would never have to exercise your faith. But when you're facing hard times, you shouldn't dread life. Isaiah 8 and 13 says, the Lord of hosts regard him as holy and honor his holy name by regarding him as your only hope of safety. And let him be your fear and let him be your dread. Lest you offend him by your fear of man and distrust of him. If you dread life and fear people, you are not trusting the Lord to save you. Keep your reverential fear and awe of God. Dread displeasing him. But don't fear anything else. If God is for you, who can be against you? No one, no in all things, these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Romans 8, 37. So this scripture, for the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the humble with salvation and adorn the wretched with victory. We have to trust the Lord. We can't be afraid of man and what people will do to us. Um, we have to put our trust in God. So as she's, as this reads, the Lord of hosts regard him as holy and honor his holy name by regarding, regarding him as your only hope or safety. So we have to look at God as our only hope and our only safety. He is the only one that can protect us and we have to seek him as such. Um, this is speaking to me because me being so shy at one point in my life, even like now, it's certain places I don't like to go in fear of people that are just mean and hateful, you know, or just people that just don't know how to act. But I can't let that stop me from enjoying my life. Now, certain situations you shouldn't put yourself in. But as far as being able to enjoy life and to see all the things that God has in this world, for us to enjoy, I got to trust him. I got to seek him. 
I got to believe that wherever it is he takes me, that he is there and that he will protect me. So in all of this, the scriptures that we need to go back and read and meditate on about God being on your side and trusting him and giving our lives to him and not being afraid of man are Psalms 149 and 4, Isaiah 8, 13, and Romans 8, 37. Somebody, little dog done got out. And he just running down the street. <laughs> oh, my word. So, that is God is on your side. The next one is be ready. Forsake not wisdom and she will keep you. She will keep, defend, and protect you. Love her and she will guard you. That's Proverbs 4 and 6. Philippians 4.13 as Joyce writes promises that Christ will empower you for anything you must face. There it is again. We have to trust him for he is our protector. He gives us everything. Christ will empower you for anything that you must face. This means that he will make you ready for anything and equal to all challenges by infusing you with inner strength. So that means no matter what we're facing in this world on a daily basis, if we trust him, God promises that he'll give us everything that we need. And as she writes, God, there are acorns and stuff falling everywhere. God will never put you in a position to do something without giving you the strength and the ability to do it. You can relax and enjoy your life for God will strengthen, complete, perfect and make you what you ought to be and equip you with everything good that you may carry out his will while he himself works in you and accomplishes that which is pleasing in his sight through Christ Jesus that's Hebrews 13 and 21 so God would never put you in a position and don't give you everything you need Yeah, that little puppy. I guess he said, I'm going back home. I don't know if he was chasing a car or what. But God will give you everything that you need. He will give you the strength. He will give you the ability, the know, everything, the words to speak. He will give you strength, and that makes you complete and perfect. And makes you what you ought to be and give you all the equipment that you need to succeed. So we have to be ready. When God is on your side, you have to be ready. In order to get ready, we have to renew your joy. Honor and majesty are found in his presence. Strength and joy are found in his sanctuary. That's 1 Chronicles 16 and 27. And Joyce writes, emotional trauma drains people of their energy. But the word says, be not grieved and depressed, for the joy of the Lord is your strength and stronghold. That is Nehemiah 8 and 10. But the word says, and the word is true. The word says, be not grieved and depressed for the joy of the Lord is your strength and stronghold. And Joyce writes, the devil wants to steal your joy because he knows that joy is your strength. Amen. He knows that joy is your strength. He wants you to be weak. So that you won't resist the turmoil he sets against you. That is why something sometimes we need each other. So true. Some days God will send messengers to build you up in faith and renew your joy. Some days he will send you to someone else who is in a weakened condition because Satan has been pounding on them. Be someone's friend today. Amen. They may need a friend to stand beside them, encourage them, to lift them up, and to pray for them in Jesus' name. So, Nehemiah 8 and 10 is telling us that. Honor and majesty are found in his presence. So, as we seek him, we find honor and majesty, 
strength and joy are in his sanctuary. But the word says, be not grieved and depressed for the joy of the Lord is your strength and stronghold. So as we seek the Lord, we find joy in him. We find strength and stronghold. Nehemiah 8 and 10. The devil wants to steal your joy. Always he does. But as we continue to seek God, we find that strength. We find that joy and that peace and that love. The fruits of the spirit is what we find. And it began to live down inside of us, encourage us, fill us with so much power. And as that power starts to grow inside of us, we begin to use our words more often, more frequent. Our words of power, our words of love and encouragement. We're not afraid to reach out to someone, to share God's love, to be that blessing that that person needs. To just hold that person's hand in their time of need. For it's just a little thing sometimes that can strengthen and empower somebody to do better, be better, to keep pushing forward, to be all God empowered them to be. But sometimes, and as it says, God will use us to do that for someone else. Everybody needs a friend, a true friend. For we already have a friend. We have a friend in Jesus. But he also was. Try these lizards. He also wants us to do the same thing that he has done. To be a friend for someone else. To share his love. His fruits of the spirit. And as we seek him, he will give us everything. He will equip us with everything that we need to be positive. To be uplifting, encouraging, helpful, a blessing to someone else. We got to be ready to renew your joy. So we're going to go to this next page that I hadn't highlighted, but I'm going to go ahead and read it. Um, this one is called Think Ahead. And we can come to all kinds of conclusions from the word think ahead. But we also can sit back and say, if we are not in control of our own lives, if we don't know what the future holds, how can you think ahead? So let's see what the word is saying in 1 Corinthians 2 and 7. But rather... What we are setting forth is a wisdom of God once hidden from the human understanding and now revealed to us by God that wisdom which God devised and decreed before the ages for our glorification to lift us into the glory of his presence. So what, we, what was hidden from us at one point in life is now revealed which God devised and decreed. He decreed before the ages for our glorification to lift us into the glory of his presence. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 7. Look ahead to the reward God has for you in heaven. God has already written the end of the book, which says that good news is in store for those who put their faith in Jesus. Even if you live to be a hundred years old and have trials every day of your life, there is good news. Paul said that our monetary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs all the trials we face now. That's 2 Corinthians 4, 17 through 18. And this means keep your eyes on the finish line and not on the turmoil around you. No matter what comes up during the day, we have to continue to tell God, thank you. Keep our eyes on him. Keep reciting with your mouth. I have the victory. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We got to think ahead. Knowing that God has already written our pages. And that he says that we're winners. We are winners. 
Isn't that a blessing to know that we got something we got to go through? But in the meantime, we are all winners. God that created us, that knows everything about us, has said, you are a winner. But we have to first start somewhere. And that is him, his word. We got a, his son, Jesus, that he sent as a sacrifice for our sin, to cover our sins, to do away with our sin. But if we don't believe in him and know who he is and confess with our mouth that he died for us, we can't win. We can't win. So we think in the head, God has already given us the words to use and to meditate on. In Jesus' name. So next we're going to follow God's spirit. <laughs> Romans 8, 27. And he who searches the hearts of men knows what is in the mind of the Holy Spirit. What his intent is because the spirit intercedes and pleads before God. In behalf of the saints according to and in harmony with God's will. These birds are working it out. Do y'all hear me? <laughs> so, and I'm going to read this again. Just in case you guys could not hear me. And he who searches the hearts of men knows what is in the mind of the Holy Spirit. What his intent is because the spirit intercedes and pleads before God in behalf of the saints according to and in the harmony of God's will. Romans 8, 27. And Joyce writes, many people follow their own desires or other people's advice instead of following the spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is given to each one of us to lead us into the fullness of our destiny and into the fullness of what Jesus died to give us. Your faith in Jesus gives you the promise of heaven. But God wants you to work all things together for your good in this life too. See Romans 8.28 Your faith in Jesus gives you the promise of heaven. But God wants you to work all things together for your good in this life. Don't be satisfied with receiving half of what Jesus died to give you. Follow the Spirit's leading so that you will get all that God has for you. Seek God for clearing guidance to remain right in the center of His perfect will for every single day. So not only are we seeking God, the Holy Spirit, but what we, when we seek God, the Holy Spirit gives to each one of us. He has something that he's given us. He leads us into the fullness of our destiny and into the fullness of what Jesus died to give us. Jesus died to give us a new life. He died to give us a chance, a second chance. Everyone deserves a second chance. And he gave it to us, but we have to seek it. We have to want it. We got to come to him. We got to believe in him and his word that whatever he says to us is not a lie. That he will not lead us astray. But he is the way, the truth, and the light. Yes, he is. He is all of that. He guides our footsteps. He encourages us. But we got to seek him. And everything that we need is in his word. So we're going to go where God sends you. Hebrews 10 and 22. Let us all come forward and draw near with true, honest, and sincere hearts and unqualified assurance and absolute conviction by faith, by the leading of the entire human personality on God and absolute trust and confidence in his power, wisdom, and goodness. So to get the true meaning of that, which I don't have my Bible at the moment, you're going to read Hebrews 10, 22. And Joyce writes, 
One of the main reasons people don't enjoy their lives is that they don't follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus fulfilled the law, we have full freedom to enter into the holy of holiness and fellowship with the Father. Hebrews call this a fresh, new, and living way. To enjoy our relationship with God, Hebrews 10 and 20, he calls it a fresh, new, and living way. Because Jesus fulfilled the law, we have full freedom to enter into the holy of holies and fellowship with the Father. And what is that called? Hebrews calls it the fresh new. It's a way to enjoy your relationship with God. So we're going to spend time with God today. And we're going to go wherever the Spirit of God leads you. He will always give you the grace to do what he calls you to do. God will not send you down a path and not give you everything that you need. But also know that to know that we're in the right place at the right time. When you enter into that era, you have peace. You're not going to be conflicted. You're not going to be unsure. You're going to know that you're there at the right time in the right place for the right reason. So we're going to thank God today for his guidance, for his fresh, new, living way. We're going to ask him to come into our hearts, continue to be in our mouths, which that's a choice for us to do. But we're going to seek him. We're going to take our time and we're going to push forward and we're going to be diligent. We're going to make it right. We're going to do it just because we know we have to. We have to for our sake. We thank God for just this opportunity. His son, the sacrifice he gave for us so that we can have a victory, so that we can live an abundant life, so that we can be blessed and highly favored and to be a blessing to someone else. To be that, that strength, that courage, that uplifting spirit that someone may need, that smile, that just small touch of caressing. It says God loves you. He is not far from you. Call on his name. There's power in the name of Jesus. Sometimes I get stuck to where all the, I can say it's just Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, holy Jesus. Thank you, God. Jesus. Jesus. Do we not know? Do you not feel that when you say Jesus? Jesus. You know what that makes me think about? Him saying, just standing there with open arms. When you say Jesus and he says, come to me. Jesus. When you come to him, it's like he folds his arms around you. And gives you a big squeeze. Like you do your children, you rub them. That sweet caress. When your children hurt themselves and you hold on to them and you caress them and you kiss their boo-boos whether they caused it or not. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We thank you for this day. A new desire. For God's spirit. For the love. The fruits of the spirit. The more you read it, I don't know about nobody else. I'm going to speak for myself. The more I do this, the more I just really and truly enjoy it. I feel so alive and just happy and just full just want to hug and love on people and just want to be a blessing just want to take away some worries and some concerns some hurt feelings to spread some encouragement and some love and some uplifting to somebody 
I pray that the moments when I do encounter people that are being mean and hateful, that God continue to give me the words to knock all of that hatred down. For that I may be able to give them what God has given me in spite of them being mean and nasty and hateful. That I can show them through me that God loves you. He didn't intend for you to be that way. No matter how down you may be, how hurt you may be, how concerned or lonely you may feel. It's not a reason to tear down, to hurt someone else. We have to find a way to be encouraging, find a way to be loving in the middle of our funk, y'all. Because we got some funk that stink. Do y'all hear me? And when I say funk, I mean we have some stuff that goes on in our lives and it give you, make you look like for real, that's funk. Do y'all hear me? But in the middle of that funk, we still have a savior. His name is Jesus. No matter how hard it may be, we cry. We be like, Lord, help me, please. I don't know what to do, Lord. I'm tired of going through this foolishness, Lord. What have I done? Is it me? Was it something I said? Did I go down the wrong path? What is it, Lord? What is it that I did to put me here? What is it that I can do now to get me in the right place? I ask you to fill me, Lord, with your Holy Spirit, your love. Dry my tears, Lord. Give me strength. Break these strongholds that are sitting on my back and on my shoulders that are causing me not to be the best that I can be. I thank you, Lord. Those moments when we're feeling like that and as the tears fall, we know that he is with us. Continue to seek his word. And it will fill you. The more you do it, the better you'll feel. You, we have been in those moments where we sit and we just cry because of whatever reason. And all of a sudden, you just feel that sense of at ease. You know where you are. You're trying to continue to push out that cry to just get all that foolishness out. But God just walks up. Jesus just come and he just pats him. He just pats him away. He just give you that soft caress. Wraps his arms around you and say, babe, girl, I got you. I will make your enemy your footstool. I am the blessing. I am the way. The truth and the light. Reach out your hand to me, and I will guide you all the days of your life. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Oh, God, thank you. When you just don't know, Lord. Some days you just don't know. You just don't know. You don't know what foot to put in front of the other. You don't know the words to say out of your mouth. You don't know how to right your wrongs. But we have a savior, y'all. We have an answer, and his name is Jesus. We got to start somewhere. And that place to begin is asking for help. He says, asking you shall receive. Going to his word, diving deep, taking, you can't, I mean, everybody's different. We sometimes go into it and we say, oh, I'm going to read a chapter a day. I'm going to read and I'm going to rightly divide the word and it's going to fill me with the spirit. I'm not one of them. I can read a scripture and I can meditate on it. But if I constantly read, sometimes I just get lost in it. But that's where persistence come in. At. You got to keep trying. You got to keep trying. When I get feel myself getting frustrated, I'll be like, okay, Lord, I feel my eyes crossing. I feel me getting lost in your word. And that is not my intention. That's not what I want. When I sit down to read your word, I want to get every bit of the understanding that I'm supposed to from what you are trying to tell me. I don't want any distractions. So, God, I ask that you help me right where I am. 
clear out my mind help me to clear out my mind and my and anything that's on me as a stronghold that is stopping me from getting what I need to help me Lord help me Lord so even with that being said this book by Joyce Meyer is not the Bible but the good thing about it is it has his word in it and it also breaks it down to where you can understand it's put in layman's terms for me but his word is just the scriptures his word what his word says to know that when you read that and if you don't understand it then you go that's why bible study is necessary because you there there are other tools besides the bible that can help you to get that understanding and this is a blessing i thank god for me being able to find that book i have been picking up george meyer books for a long time and never really completed a series but i thank god today where I am and I just want to say thank y'all for coming and sitting with me and God's word says where two or more gather there he is so for all of you that watch this video and you leave a comment I pray for healing for all of us that need it I pray for anyone that needs food on their table money to pay their bills healing in their minds for their their bodies for their children praying for something whatever it may be if you need a car a dependable car if you need a job if you want a husband the right one that God has for you if you want children I just come to you right now father in the name of Jesus to answer their prayers God for we know that your will will be done and that if it's in your will for this for these things to happen we just touch and agree right now and we say thank you thank you in advance god for the things that you're doing and may the words that you have written continue to fill us with all of the fruits of the spirit we thank you god for this day that you have made we will rejoice and be glad in it and I just look forward to the rest of the day, God, and I ask that you continue to wrap your arms around those that are choosing to be on the other side. I ask that you touch them, touch their hearts, Lord. Let them know that this is not the life that you intended for them. So we're going to come together as your people and we're going to uplift and support each other. I thank you for my visitors on yesterday, my sisters in Christ. I thank you for the days to come. I thank you for those that chose to watch the video, Lord, and I pray that they were able to receive the love that we were sharing with each other and that one day we'll all be able to gather together here on earth before that day for you to come back for us, that we can come together as women and we can fellowship and enjoy each other, love, have a good old time, the, the time that you say that we can have. I thank you, God, for this day. I thank you for my husband. I pray that you meet him right where he is. He is your son. He is a father. He's a husband. He's a friend. And I ask that you bless him, God. Touch his heart, his mind, and his spirit. Give him everything that he needs to be who you created him to be. I ask that you continue to touch my children. I pray for protection for my children today. That they are protected in school. That no harm comes to them. That may they be encouraged. Uplifted. May they learn everything. That is set before them. The good things. And not the bad. Protect the teachers Lord. They need extra help. For teaching these children are not easy. But we pray. I pray. That they have the right mindset the right spirit to bless these children as a caregiver and a teacher. But we need it, Lord. Not only do they need to be taught, they need to be cared for. So we thank you for this day in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
as we bless your name. I love y'all to life. Amen, y'all. Y'all have a good day. And may the fruit of the Spirit continue to live down inside of you. To fill you with love, joy. May you continue to smile. Hey, sugar. <laughs> Uh, I just ask God to bless you all in, in the way that only he can. Anybody else, us, we can bless you. But God can do some things that we have not even imagined. And I thank y'all for watching. I love y'all. Bye, sugar.